Morning everybody, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. It is 60, almost 62 degrees at 10.30 in the morning. Just finished videos and comments for the day. Um, 73 in the house, not bad. Now, I took the temperature sender out of the watershed and pulled the batteries out because somebody told me it's very likely that these two thermometers were reading the same sending unit and I figured you know it could be right so when I removed the batteries from this they both froze okay so I then went out and I had to reset um, the sending unit for this one and this unit as well I had to remove the batteries from this and the sending unit in order for this to reset and start working again now it's showing 60 degrees outdoors and 80 in the greenhouse at this time. This is frozen at 49. Probably if I remove the batteries and reset it, it'll start working again and show the greenhouse temperature because it's the only sending unit hooked up. So with Accurite on the cheaper Accurite thermometers, they all use the same chips. Uh, sending units, it's the exact same thing and you cannot use more than one and I've read online that if you have a neighbor that has an Accurite thermometer and you have an Accurite thermometer one of you guys is going to be reading the other person's t temperature it doesn't work so on the higher more expensive priced Accurite thermometers you can get away with adjusting the uh, sending uh, frequency sending and receiving frequency but on the cheap ones you're stuck so they don't work they do not work on separate frequencies and they're both going to receive the signal from the same sending unit this one is angry with me and frozen whatever so i'm going to go out in the greenhouse and check with the other thermometer and see if this is close to the real temperature um, it's showing 75 indoors and here it's showing 73 indoors so this unit after i reset it immediately jumped up to too high a temperature indoors and I believe out so it's frustrating I'm not pleased with these type of thermometers it's mostly sunny with a little haze um, hopefully it'll clear up totally sun is on the greenhouse shining inside nicely so let's go in and see what we have here um, it does not feel like 80 degrees in here no way it is 66 degrees, so the Accurite sending unit is, and it doesn't feel like 80 degrees even though a little bit of sun was on it. But I'm not pleased with the Accurite wireless thermometers at all. It's showing 80 degrees. The 66 is more realistic and I believe more accurate. So sadly the uh, wireless thermometers are not, uh, not working out so well. I'm going to try resetting them again and see what happens, but that seriously should not be necessary. So, all right. Well, the fishies are good. I tried to feed them some salad last night, but they're, um, it looks like they nibbled on it a little bit. I want to start switching them over to vegetation and insects and worms that I can provide for them. Um, the water that I have for them is creek water, so there's a lot of natural stuff from the creek. I read that, oh, there's one nibbling on the lettuce as I speak. Can't really, ah, uh, glare in the, the light, glare from the light, although I can't see it, is on the camera. They are nibbling on the lettuce. I think their mouths are too small to really do it any damage. So I might have to come up with a lettuce dicer, but... I read that you can train these fish to eat um, different foods, like natural natural foods. These have probably been raised in a uh, captive environment. They are nibbling on the lettuce. They are. So I'm probably just going to have to figure a way to grind it up for them, make it small enough for them to eat, and train them to eat the uh, the natural foods that I provide for them. Anyway, I got goldfish for now because they're easy to care for and they don't require that much 
um, oxygen and well they don't require much care at all the water is still messy and I'm waiting for it to settle hopefully well it'll probably take another day before that settled but we'll see it's almost clear but it's just a little bit cloudy yet yeah you can see this through the sides it's, it's getting cleaner it's getting a lot cleaner so maybe by the end of the day or so all right well I've got a big list of things to do today and uh, I'm gonna take a break from the greenhouse we have a couple days of 70 degrees coming up and warmer nights so the greenhouse will be fine and um, I do want to make another raised bed like this and fill in the other um, side there and have this whole front be raised beds and start planting some food to grow to eat so anyway I'm gonna get to work I'll talk to you guys later I do have plans to work in the watershed and try to get that blocked off closed up and start insulating in there and I also have to frame a door like I did for the greenhouse a double door system I like the idea I like how it turned out and I'm going to do the same on the shed because it's just uh, it really really works well alright guys see you in a bit hi everybody we are in absorption mode already at 1230 in the afternoon unbelievable but I'm about to change that we are going to plug in a freezer that takes 230 watts of power. This is a big moment, everybody, to see if we can run a freezer in here uh, on the off-grid homestead because deer season is coming, and I want to see if I can run a freezer 24-7 off the solar power. Last year I tried and failed. I failed miserably in the attempt at running the freezer, but my system was a lot weaker. I've got a lot better setup now, so I'm going to plug in the freezer. I have the uh, it fell on me. I have the cord. Oh, that's why there's a lot of pressure on that cord. The cord is sitting here. Forgive me for the dirty camera. I keep trying to clean it, and I don't know what that is. I think it's inside the camera. So forgive me, guys. People are complaining that my lenses are dirty, and I think it's inside the camera because I work with it in a dusty environment all the time. Anyway, I've got the plug plugged in here. I'm going to go out and plug in the freezer outside, and if it works, I will bring it to the inside and set it up here inside the uh, off-grid uh, water and battery shed. So, the de big test. One last look. We've got 14.7 volts on the battery bank, 200 and, well, it was 212 watts, absorption mode. We're going to plug it into the blue inverter that takes 600, uh, 600 watts normal, 1200 surge. Not going to be a problem to run 230 watts on that, plus laptops and everything else we do. So let's go plug it in and see what happens. Chris is standing by. Not yet, Chris. Not yet, Chris. Chris is standing by, going to make the connection while we watch live on the system. We've got, it's a Magic Chef, um, so right at home. Okay, it has rated at 115 volts and 2 amps, okay? Very nice freezer, not very old, so it's empty, but I want to make sure that we can run it before we go ahead and start putting stuff in it. If it runs, if we can run it and maintain it, we will put it into the shed and use it for deer season. Chris, stand by. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get inside. Okay, guys, the moment we have been waiting for. All right, Chris, plug it in. Okay. I heard a buzz. Is it, is it, uh... I hear it buzzing. I hear the inverter buzzing. Do you hear the compressor? No, turn it on. Alright, unplug it. Oh wait. I wonder if there was too much surge. The the uh, current kicked in higher. The inverter was buzzing. Plug it in again. Look at the current kick up on that. There it kicked in. Look at the power go up. See, now we're back in MPPT mode, and we are pulling. See, we have 1,200 watts of solar panels out there, guys, and we're not pulling in much because we don't need that much because we haven't been using anything here. Oops. All right, unplug it. 
Okay, that is too much for this. Uh, the surge for this little inverter. It's too much for this little inverter. I have to see if the old green one works. Um, the green one, since we had that um, lightning strike, has been giving me issues. Hold on, Chris. Right. Let me see if this will work or not. Alright, plug it in and see what happens. Alright, it's on. It's on. I can hear it. I can hear it. All right, guys, we're pulling 300 watts. We're in MPPT mode. Uh, voltage is still holding above 14 volts and rising. Look at that, rising, guys. We are powering the freezer. I can hear it running. Pulling 20 amps off the solar panels. And we have 1,200 watts of capability. Um, so let's see what happens. This thing isn't even... It's not even blinking at that the fans aren't on or anything it is running so there we have it guys let's see what happens we'll come back after a while we'll monitor the voltage the scary part is going to be at night when there's no sun right now we have full sunlight on the solar panels let's go out and have a look three panels in sunlight that's uh 600 watts plus there's over 600 watts of solar there's three panels in full sunlight. That's 1,200 watts of solar panels in the sunlight. And we're only pulling 300 watts, which means we have power to spare during sunlight hours. Now the big test is going to be to see if the battery bank has enough capacity at night. I can hear it running. It's a very quiet compressor. Yeah. I can hear it running. We are pumping. We are pumping. I can hear the compressor running. So we'll let it run for a while, everybody. And if this works out, then it's going in and going to be become a permanent part of the off-grid homestead. And Melanie can have her ice cream, finally. <laughs> right, Chris? I promise Melanie we'll keep it stocked with ice cream and deer meat. Hey, everybody. I'm out behind the shed putting in blocking. I'm going to block in all these uh, rafters slow down some of the air loss obviously the heat loss from inside and then I'll, I'll uh, go inside and start putting in the star from insulation which will still allow ventilation to flow up through those uh, the corrugated steel um, preventing any um, moisture accumulation on the metal in winter so I'm just gonna knock this out and uh, I probably won't be recording much while I do it because I'm really in a hurry a measure cut and slam it in Got my framing nailer here, my good friend, and I'm just going to try to get this done quickly. By the way, the freezer is running. I put my hand inside. I'm not going to open it again. I have my hand inside, and it is cold, so it's working. It is hazy, so we're not looking so good on the solar right now. Um, let's go see what the voltage looks like, and I'll get back to work. 13.7 um, volts, 177 watts coming in in MPPT mode. Um, so we'll see if we can run the freezer 24-7. I really hope so, but we'll find out. And we're hitting close to 300 watts. Absorption mode. Back in absorption mode. That's a good thing. Means the freezer is... Uh, Getting cold and uh, power usage is going down. Melanie just turned on the water pump. You can see the power kicking up. So we've got power to spare. Now it all depends on the battery bank if they've got power to spare. I put in all the blocking. Of course you can still see daylight outside through the uh, corrugated roofing. But that will be ventilation. Now I've got to get out the big styrofoam sheets and start cutting and pasting. This is going to be quite a task. And today is Wednesday and it's about 3, 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. So I probably will not be able to finish this because I have to cut for every single piece in here separately and individually to make sure it fits snug. So I want to get out big 4 by 8 sheets of styrofoam insulation and cut for every single piece here all along the roof of the uh, shed here. 
Hey everybody, the freezer is cycling. It just kicked on again, and we're in absorption mode with the freezer on. So let's get, take you out and show you. You can hear the compressor, I think. It just kicked in a minute ago. By the time I went and filled two water jugs and put them in here, the freezer was running again. So I put two half uh, jugs of water in here to see if that'll freeze. And already, like I said, the freezer is cycling on and off, so it seems to be a very efficient unit. And uh, we're in absorption mode, so that's a good thing. Hey, everybody. Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. We have... Oh, I can't see it. Oh, it just dropped. Uh, it was 79.7. Then I went out to get the camera. It was 79.5. It was almost 80 full degrees outside on the 2nd of November. That is crazy summer weather. Really nice. Uh, both of my other thermometers are now synced and tracking and showing 81 degrees in the greenhouse. The sun is off the greenhouse at 3.30 in the afternoon because of all the trees in the way. So that is how it is until I drop some trees out there. But... Uh, and that's, of course, also with the leaves on the trees, that will change. The sun is lower in the sky. So, uh, 80 degrees on this sunny November day. Got the windows open. The window screens back in to the windows. Baby cat is having a good time. Baby cat, show us a happy smile. Psst. Hey. She's smiling big and happy. She's enjoying the, uh, fresh air on this warm summery day got uh, all the windows in the house opened up and all the screens back in on this day trying to cool it down in here it's 80 degrees in and 80 degrees out hey everybody um, the water is only just starting to freeze it's still uh, not frozen the compressor just kicked on when I opened it but it was off a minute ago so it's cycling we have 13.1 volts MPBT mode, 27 watts coming in, and the Renogy has just a little half that coming in, so uh, 30 watts, 30, 45 watts, so we'll see how it goes through the night. What do you think, Chris? There. It looks like a barn now, yeah. except for the rusty spot. Yeah. Um, that is almost two entire sheets of um, metal from a swimming pole liner. And we have closed in one wall of the goat pen entirely. So that's a good windbreak. They won't have any problems in extreme winter now nope. with the straw bedding and the raised bed we're making for them, plus the closed in pen and that solves Chris's problem because they were trying to eat the hay from the outside and pulling it through the walls before so and then we just got to build a little bit of a closed door on the inside or on the front yeah. and we'll have a pretty good setup here for the goats what do you think Chris yep. I think it's gonna be all right we'll see how it goes I don't know if we need blocking up in there or not between the um, two by sixes but we'll Play it by ear this winter and see. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The only problem I really saw. If, well, we're going to need ventilation yeah. too, though. So we got to consider that. We'll play it by ear. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, I got to get ready to go. So we'll talk to you all later. Unless something else comes up. Troy from the Do It Yourself World and the Off Grid Project. And Chris. Chris. Bye, guys. Take it easy.